Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have here a patient who attended with bilateral keratosis obturans, and this there left ear was the more severe out of the two. During the course of this video, I'll explain what keratosis obturans is for anyone who's new to my channel, and I'll also discuss the different grading systems of keratosis obturans, and I'll also try and explain how keratosis obturans is differentiated clinically from other um, uh, pathologies that originate with, from the ear canal, such as a, um, a canal cholesteratoma. Before I do that, I'll just give you a bit of a back uh, history and case history of this patient. This patient was um, uh, treated, uh, I think, three uh, separate occasions by um, another clinic, it's a high, a high street national chain clinic, um, who really struggled. And I don't blame them actually. I, I did explain to the patient that keratosis obturans is extremely difficult to, to remove. Um, I don't think it was diagnosed as keratosis obturans by the other clinics, and it can be difficult in their defense. Um, keratosis obturans uh, can often be mistaken for really hard impacted earwax. And in fact, it was the patient who self-diagnosed themselves with keratosis obturans. They had visited my YouTube channel and uh, listened to some of the uh, key symptoms of keratosis obturans, which I'll explain in a moment as well. And based on that, uh, the patient themselves believed that they had this condition. Of course, they weren't sure, but that's what they believed. And they were proven to be correct when they attended. So keratosis obturans is a very unusual, quite rare, abnormal accumulation of dead keratin. So keratin is a protein uh, found on within the skin cells in our ear and also other, other parts of the body, of course. And also keratin is found um, on our hair strands and fingernails. And it's, um, it's keratin is has very useful properties. It provides a, a protective um, physical and chemical barrier. It, it's hydrophobic, so it helps to repel water, so it prevents skin cells from um, over-absorbing and over-hydrating and then mas becoming macerated to soften and damp and weakened. And it also it helps to reflect harmful UV sun rays, so it has got a very um, beneficial property. Um, but when you've got keratosis obturans, it's when you've got a, an accumulation of this dead skin, this keratin, and it forms into a plug. And this plug can no longer migrate out of the ear and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I would almost describe it as being like a rubber ball within your ear getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And due to the amount of kinetic energy and pressure and force this rubber ball, this plug of dead keratin has, it begins to expand and widen the ear canal and remodel it. Just to give you some perspective how much force is required for this uh, plug of skin to do that, the temporal bone, which is the bone that encapsulates the ear canal, is regarded as one of the strongest and toughest bones in the body. Um, the femur is, uh, I believe, the, the toughest bone and followed um, by the temporal bone. So you can imagine that sheer force. And as such, one of the key symptoms, and I would say m almost everyone who has keratosis obturans, they uh, report uh, oltalgia, so ear pain. That's one of the hallmarks of keratosis obturans. You can imagine that plug of dead uh, accumulated skin keratin just getting bigger in your ear and to the point where it's actually reshaping, remodeling your ear and expanding and widening the ear canal. That can be very, very um, uncomfortable. Of course, acute hearing loss. Um, and I would also say the majority of people with keratosis obturans, they also have this bleeding. So you can see all this blood around the matrix. So the core of the, the keratosis obturans, it's um, very well organized dead skin. And what I mean by that is that this keratin, it's like ribbons and these ribbons are folded upon itself. And that's the core of the plug. So that's what I mean by very well organized. It's very well structured. And then around the periphery, you get this silvery white matrix. So this is that the fresher layer of dead skin that's just died and shedded. And because of the expansion of the ear canal and the irritation to the skin of the ear canal, 
um, you have more blood vessels forming, um, capillaries, should I say, and these blood capillaries um, burst upon removing the plug of keratosis obtrans, and that's why you're getting all this bleeding. It's not because we've made contact with the canal wall or graze. You've been watching the video, as you can see, there was we've not um, traumatised this ear in any way. But all this blood is occurring because all these newly formed blood capillaries that are, uh, are formed uh, on the matrix, on the periphery. And you'll see what I mean by the periphery, this white silvery um, lining of the plug of keratin. Um, upon removal, these new blood capillaries burst and they are formed due to the expansion, we believe, of the ear canal and the irritation uh, of the bony part of the ear canal. So it's a response mechanism. And you normally then get edema, you get swelling around the, um, the plug of uh, keratosis obturans, and that swelling edema makes it so much more difficult. So not only are you getting this widening of the ear canal because of the sheer pressure of the plug, but either side of the ear canal, because of the, the, the trauma caused by the expansion, you get swelling, and the swelling then narrows certain parts of the ear canal, making it much more difficult to remove. And this patient, I would say, has got a grade three keratosis obturans. There's four grades. Grade one is your very mild keratosis obturans where patients may experience um, some pain, but there's no visible widening of the ear canal. Grade two is when you've got mild um, widening and expansion of the ear canal. Grade three is when you've got more moderate expansion of the ear canal and remodeling of the ear canal. And grade three, typically you get a lot more bleeding. You get granulation tissue, which is connective tissue with its own blood vessel supply. Um, which there are some here. And then grade four is your really, really extreme ones where the ear canal has widened so much that it's become part of the mastoid bone, which is the bone behind the ear canal. And that, that you can imagine that's excruciatingly painful. So I managed to remove that using an ear hook. And when we go back in, you're going to see this, uh, this layer of skin. So imagine that skin. You can imagine bundles of that skin that I've just vacuumed folded upon itself, and that's the core. Um, so the eardrum's intact. Um, now we're just going to mop. You can see a bit of swelling here, a bit of edema where I am, a bit of bruising. Um, the patient, as I said, has had three failed attempts prior to attending. So the ear was already traumatised uh, before attending. But th this bleeding wasn't caused by the previous clinic. It was purely it's a landmark of keratosis obturans. And I'm going to use a fine end in a moment. And you're going to see just how widened and expanded the ear canal is. Um, so what differentiates a keratosis obturans from other uh, pathologies in the ear? So uh, another pathology that can cause um, a widening of the ear canal is called a canal cholesteratoma, and that, that's quite rare. Um, a canal cholesteratoma, however, is more of an infection and it's more localised, whereas keratosis obturans is you get this big plug of dead skin and it's all the way around the ear canal. Um, a canal cholesteratoma is when dead skin gets trapped in uh, a pothole or crater within the ear canal and it then gets infected and the skin, the, all the, the healthy skin around it gets infected and then the bone itself gets infected. And when that bone gets infected, it causes erosion of the bone. So keratosis obtrans is slightly different. You don't get erosion of the bone, you get expansion of the bone. So there are two, uh, and also keratosis obtrans, it, it, it encapsulates the whole ear canal, whereas a canal cholesteratoma is more localised. A canal cholesteratoma also, you do get a lot of mucopurulent discharge. That's quite uh, odorous because of the bones infected and you're getting necrosis um, of the bone. So that's how you differentiate between the two. Um, the patient, um, upon... Um, obtaining more thorough history. Uh, they've always had uh, a problem with their ears since childhood. It, historically, they've had the ears irrigated at the doctors or syringed with water, and the patient did always say that was always bleeding afterwards. Bleeding is not a normal um, symptom if you've got earwax. It's very rare that you get bleeding, unless the clinician themselves have caused trauma to the ear in the process of removing the wax. So whenever you've got bleeding like this, you've got to think... It's not probably a wax, it's keratosis obtrans. And it is one of the most difficult things to remove uh, from the ear because you're removing this really large unplug that's widened the ear canal. And on either side, the ear canal's narrowed because of the swelling. It is quite tricky. Uh, the patient was over the moon. I've, I have referred the patient to their GP because I think they would benefit from an onwards referral to ENT because... 
generally with characters who's trans, they're going to have to have their ears clean on a regular basis. And it's, it's a service that, because it's a medical condition, um, earwax removal, it's in the UK, there's a there's debate as to whether it's a health um, procedure or medical, and there is different meanings to those two, two things, believe it or not. Keratosis of trans has, is regarded more as a medical condition, and the patient should be able to have this removed on the NHS by ENT. It may not be the ENT consultant themselves but the registrars or ENT nurse but within the NHS um, and that because of it's potentially a grade three uh, it's worthwhile than just examining this just to make sure there's no further treatment required sometimes you can perform a myotoplasty uh, to almost um, either ex- widen the rest of the ear canal so it's um, you, you no longer get in this expansion or to fill up patch up these openings so again um, when you've got a widening like this, skin that would normally migrate out of the ear without any problem is now going to enter this widening and get trapped and no longer able to escape. So once you've got this craters widening, you're just a lot more prone to developing keratosis obturans. May also potentially, um, with a condition like this, secondary to keratosis obturans, also develop a canal cholesteatoma because dead skin can get trapped uh, within the ear canal and then get infected. But I don't think that's the case at the moment. So this is a grade one keratosis obturans. The patient, um, I'm not sh- I'm not entirely sure why this wasn't removed. Um, uh, the patient said they struggled to remove this, but this is pretty straightforward. Uh, I just used a hook just to remove it. I, I think the patient advised at the clinic that they visited, uh, they only perform microsuction. They don't use any other tools or instruments. Um, so it could have been with the suction, it'd probably be a bit tricky to remove this because it's dead skin and it's it's uh, attached itself to the canal wall. So you can see here, there's a, you could argue possibly a grade two, uh, but you can see that widening there, but it was nowhere near as severe as their left ear. You're going to see some close-ups now uh, of that large keratosis of removed from the left ear, and you can see that organized core of dead skin and it's surrounded by that matrix of um, white silvery matrix skin and then because of the bleeding on the right hand side that's called an otoblock it's just a cotton wool sponge I put that in the ear after the procedure just to absorb some of that um, blood and try to promote clotting of the blood so the bleeding stops well I hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well speak soon